Dzień dobry, Kinga Kwiecień i Studium Multimedialne Portalu Branżowego Cire Cafe. Za chwilę połączymy się z kolejnym gościem, który ze swojej perspektywy będzie opowiadał nam o transformacji energetycznej, bo to właśnie transformacja energetyczna jest tematem przewodnim, którym zajmujemy się. Wyjaśniamy i tłumaczymy zagadnienia dotyczące kierunków energetyki, polskiej gospodarki, jak będzie wyglądała przeszłość i nasz przemysł. Today we are connecting with Michael Blumenfeld, Industrial Lubricant Development, Wind Industry Specialist, ExxonMobil. Hello, Mike. Hello, it's very, very nice to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. My name is Mike Blumenfeld. Um, I am uh, currently an OEM technology advisor with ExxonMobil. Uh, I've spent the last 14 or so years um, doing lubricant formulation, working on everything from Um, you know, race cars to wind turbines to uh, compressors, gears, you know, anything you can think of, any moving parts. Um, I've been very involved with the science there. Um, I'm uh, a chemist by training, so I have uh, did research in surface science at the University of Arizona, uh, where I got my PhD. Um, and I've been able to apply some of those learnings in um Uh, in, in surface science to the field of, of tribology, which is really, you know, how things move, um, how surfaces interact and how friction and wear occur. Today we are talking because it's very important day is Wind Energy uh, Day in Hamburg 2024. And can you give us a preview of what ExxonMobil is showcasing at the fair, what we can expect? Sure, absolutely. So this is really exciting um, time for me because I've been working on a project now for uh, close to six years um, on our next generation wind turbine gear oil. And so something that started as, as just sort of ideas in, in, a, uh, in, in a boardroom, we're now getting ready to release that uh, into the world. Um, so we're going to be announcing the, um, our, our brand new wind turbine gear oil, uh, Mobile SHC Gear 320 Wind Power which is, it's very exciting because it's, um, it's really the first fill for life capable uh, wind turbine gear oil, builds on decades of experience and a lot of R&D work. Um, and we're, we're thrilled to be able to show it for the first time at, at Wind Energy Hamburg. Oh, sounds great. I see that you are very excited when you talk about this. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's, it has been a labor of love. You know, it's one of those things where I've gotten to see from, you know, total inception to um, you know to testing and field trials and getting it all the way um, to to commercialization is a huge you know exciting time I finally get a chance to talk about it um, in public you know something that I've been talking about a lot you know just within Exxon Mobil um, so that's really exciting for me okay so I just want to talk about um, Polish market because uh, sure. the Polish wind energy market is developing rapidly uh, with increasing investments and new regulations. What opportunities do you see for Action Mobile for growth and innovation in this market? How can you support local to wind farm operators? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we always like to think of you know, the folks who are using our lubricants. And that in includes um, those folks in Poland who are um, who are either getting into wind for the first time and, and developing their first projects or those who are, are very experienced. We have um, dedicated field engineers who are available to, um, to interact, to answer questions, to share some of the experience that we've gained in other markets, um, making sure that they've got access to the best practices, whether it's, you know, the, the simple things that, that, that go unnoticed, things like, you know, how do you maintain a lubricant inventory? How do you take care of the lubricant to make sure it's available for you? Um, what are the trends in lubrication? What are upcoming product releases? Uh, so, so there's a lot of different tips and tricks that we can provide. Um, and then uh, that comes through the, that local field engineering team. We have been developing wind turbine um, lubricants Uh, since the 1990s. And we've been involved in R&D with all of the world's leading OEMs. And because we have that deep history in, in lubricants and lubricant science, we're often the first folks that people come to when they have problems. And like any growing industry, right, ra especially rapidly growing industries like wind, there have been challenges along the way. And as those challenges come up, 
we typically get the call that say, hey, we're seeing some kind of um, wear or failure that we've never seen before. We need to understand it. And, you know, when you've got a, you know, a big machine in the ground, you can't, um, you can't just, you know, take it down and change parts very easily, except for the lubricant. The lubricant is something you can often change um, even while the turbine is, you know, it's, it's just a quick oil change and you, and you have a new component. And so oftentimes folks look to the lubricant supplier to solve challenges um, that are, you know, very difficult to charge, to, to change from an engineering standpoint. Oh. So we get the call and because we were involved in that engineering, our lubricants were sort of the lubricants that the, the industry grew up around and, you know, we ISO VG320 is the key lubricant for um, for a wind turbine gear oil, and you know we've had that product available for a long time, and everybody uses it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, Exxon Mobil emphasizes its molecular muscle in the wind energy sector. Yeah, and yeah. could you explain what does it mean and how it benefits wind turbine operators? Sure, absolutely. So, so I mean, Exxon Mobil is a, a huge corporation, right? And, and, and lubricants are, are part of that, um, of, of a large integrated oil and gas company. So what we do is we take um, uh, molecules and we steward them through uh, development and supply chain all the way from, you know, oil and gas all the, to, to a finished lubricant. So we get to see every step in the process. So a lubricant is made up of, of you know, base oils is, is a the majority of just about any lubricant is made up of the base oils. And we are one of the world's largest base oil supplier. We develop the synthetic molecules. Um, We are still one of the few um, uh, companies that does what's called component formulation. So in in our new product, Mobil SHC Gear 320 Wind Power, we've chosen each component one by one. So rather than taking a package from an additive supplier, We use multiple additive suppliers, combine the best from all of these additive suppliers, and then put together a product that's capable of doing something that no other product in the market is capable of doing. So that's what we call the molecular muscle. Ah, now I see. Okay, I understand. So could you present examples of how tailored lubrication solutions meet the unique demands of different wind energy operations? Absolutely. So so we... um, we are very excited to work with um, equipment builders and equipment manufacturers, gearbox manufacturers. And oftentimes um, when they're doing, you know, releasing new technology or, or new equipment, they they need a lubricant that's different from, from the existing lubricants that are available. And in those cases, you know, they want to work with somebody who has the scale and the history to to innovate in that area and provide a lubricant that specifically solves a problem for them. Um, one example um, that that we've done recently is we've started um, uh, producing what are called top treats. So this is actually a response to industry requests to be able to treat their lubricant um, like they would, um, you know, t- treating a, a patient. So you provide uh, a medicine to improve um, the health of a patient. We provide top treats to improve the health of a, lubric- the health of a lubricant. And, and by doing that, we're giving you know, um, customers the ability to really t- take control if they want to um, of how they're treating their lubricant. So it's, really, it's, it's, it's intended to help those who really want that bespoke solution. And in your opinion, what is the future of wind energy industry? What trends and directions of development do you predict? Oh, I see. I see growth, growth all around. Um, you know, it's a very healthy, it's a very exciting industry. It's one where there's a lot of passion, and a lot of times where you find that passion, you're going to find you know that those incredible growth stories. Um, you know. I, I do see of a trend that's similar to the automotive industry. So I see them looking for things like efficiency. I see them looking for cutting um, total cost of ownership um, in the technology space. Uh, I see them experimenting with with new drivetrains, things like the hybrid drive. I see them um, ex- going to um, longer oil drain intervals and and really pushing the envelope to make sure that that wind is sustainable and profitable. 
Okay. And what are the perspective, perspectives for the fewer development of wind power plants in European Union and Poland? What is your estimation of share of wind energy in energy mix for 2035? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a very, that's a difficult one to answer. It's a great question. And it's one I wish I knew the answer to. Um, but it, it's, it's again, you know, we see growth. Absolutely. We see, um, uh, we see the entire industry coming together, working to make sure that uh, that energy is reliable, that's affordable, um, and we see you know the lubricant suppliers being a key component to making sure that that whole system works together. Okay, and trends. Um, do you see um, or what are the latest trends in relation to wind turbines technology? Um, so, so the, the, the key ones, the one that we've seen the most of and is the most visible is the growth of the turbine size. And it's a very interesting debate right now trying to decide, well, how big is big enough? Is there going to be a, a cap in terms of how many megawatts you can get out of an individual turbine? So I've seen some people say that, you know, that the trend's going to continue and we're going to start seeing things like 20 megawatt turbines in the future. And I've also seen folks who say that, no, you know, between 10 and 15 megawatts is kind of the sweet spot. And we expect to see a plateau there. And, and at some point, you know, bigger is not better. So I'm really excited to see, you know, which of those is going to be right. And we will know in the next, you know, five or 10 years as, as R&D continues um, from the OEMs. Okay. And what other green energy sources or green solutions uh, are in portfolio of Action Mobile offer? So, so we do lubricants for every application um, for mobile. And no matter what energy source you're talking about, we provide lubrication solutions for that energy source. And that can range from, you know, the steam turbines in a nuclear power plant. That could be um, the tracking drive, um, a solar tracking drive where, um, you know, you're, you're moving the solar panels. Um, we do uh, for, for carbon cap capture uh, and, and storage, we do uh, CO2 compressor lubricants. So the compressors that actually push CO2 um, through a pipeline um, and, and every application you can think of. I mean, one of the most exciting things about lubricants is they touch everything. Anytime you have a moving part, you're going to find a lubricant. So um, we have the opportunity to really get involved in, in every sector. Um, one, one sector that's near and dear to my heart uh, is actually the um, is wave power where we've actually used some of our wind turbine gear oils in wave power machines, because in some cases they look like, you know, underwater wind turbines. So there's lots of opportunities for lubricants to play a role in, in shaping the energy mix in the future. Very interesting. Um, Mike, very thank you so much. And I really appreciate uh, for your time and this interview. It was really nice Anytime. for you. Absolutely. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much for including me.